that way or that way that way brings me back to the shop that way brings me away from the shop but that way looks nice and twisty Hey everyone, it's Dick here. This is the second of two videos where I ride Kyle's 1986 Yamaha VMAX. Please check out the first video at your leisure for more context for this one. The 1986 VMAX is a four-cylinder, five-speed, shaft-driven motorcycle. It boasts 140 brake horsepower with just under 150 newton meters of torque at 7,500 RPM. Let's pick up with my ride and see how I fared. You feel, oh my God, you feel like, you feel a hundred pounds heavier and two feet taller on this thing. Against better judgment, I'm letting this thing rev out because I want to get up to that V-boost zone. So I'm staying in a lower gear. I'm burning fuel faster, which is not the best thing on a V-Max, but I'm, I'm revving it out. I'm letting the engine do its thing, trying to find that sweet spot where those servos open up those valves. It's funny that this is an 80s bike because it, there's something so very 80s about the V-Boost servos opening up valves to flood the engine with fuel. You kind of feel like that motorcycle vigilante street hawk where it's like you got to you got to get up to 5800 RPM street hawk so you can Get there in time to save the damsel. You gotta activate those servos. There's something so very 80s about that. Oh, it's a dunk. And that, the torque of the V4 just go, uh, pulling you out, just pulling you forward. Your arms are kind of, well me, my arms are, if I want to, they're straight. They're muscle straight. I have a little bit of a bend. It's very comfortable. I'm at about a 90 degree, maybe a little more than a 90 degree bend in the knees. But he's put these, <laughs> I don't know what it is about 80s Yamahas, but there's these highway bars out in front. Where now I'm just, I'm in the shape of a C right now in my body. I feel a little bit of a turbulence in my legs now that my legs are out front. And I'm used to riding, I'm used to riding a more upright mid-peg position, so I, I'm not too bothered by it. So I, I, I don't think I'd find myself using those unless my legs get really tired, but my knees aren't scrunched. Like I said, I'm sitting very tall in this, almost like the Royal Enfield. I mean, I'm a little more squat than the Royal Enfield, but not far off. So I, I kind of like this geometry on this bike. It's funny it's a V4, because when I was riding, maybe I'll go back on that road. Yeah. It's funny it's a V4, because when I was riding Ian's VFR, which is also a V4, there is the same kind of cult versus detractor relationship with the VFR as there is with the VMAX. I don't know what it is, and maybe it's because of the nature of the brutality of a V4, or because the styling of a V4. You, you kind of, you, you start with the engine on a V4 and you have to really work around that monster of an engine where some motorcycles are, you know, you know there's a V-twin going in there, so you could be a bit more funky with the frame, a bit more funky with the fenders and the, where you put the fuel tank and the air box and stuff, but with a V4, it's so big. It's such a big power plant that you, you are required to work around it. You're required to engineer around it. What the hell is this? Ugh. Oh, that was scary. That was like a busted up railroad track. 
Uh, interesting to go around. Ooh, what am I doing here? Okay. A little blind turn. Ooh, back over the railroad tracks. And then under the railroad. What the hell? Where am I? In Thomas the Tank Engine Town. Anyway, you're required to engineer around this giant engine. That maybe you come up with some unique solutions that may or may not be aesthetic or may or may not be required by the the functionality, the engineering of the bike. But I find it interesting that both the VFR and the VMAX have that same love-hate cult of personality around it. I have to say, I haven't ridden a stock VFR from this era, but Ian's dispatch tracker and this VMAX are kith and kin in a way. There's also something very unique about 80s era bikes. It's the smell. You smell the oil and the gas and the the rubber mounts and the gaskets and the the plastics and everything is just hot and smelly and industrial and mechanical. Mm. Let's go this way. Everyone watching the tachometer? Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that car just went by because I thought this was a straightaway to the horizon. There's a tiny little stoplight there. So I will not be getting V-boost in top gear at this on this straightaway. <laughs> Back across the railroad tracks. These railroad tracks scare the shit out of me. All right, let's see. be doing that all the time if I own this bike. Just be trying to get the V-boost. I would actually put a little light, a little like celebration light somewhere. V-boost! <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> it's hiding there. Way out front there. Look at where I am. There's no place I'd rather be right now than right here on this bike with that red barn and that green field and that reasonably blue sky above me. V-boost! It's definitely cumbersome. But if you... If you plan ahead, if you think about what you're doing, if you're in it, which is what you should always be on a motorcycle, if you're in it, then this bike is a joy to ride. I can see how this bike could get people in trouble. I could see how this bike could be too much bike for someone. I could see how this bike 
requires a little more work than other motorcycles. But unlike the motorcycles that I feel like I'm working at riding, this is a different type of work. You're not fighting it. You're not, you're not physically working. It's a mental exercise when you ride this bike. And if you're there 100% in your head, and, you're, and, you're, and you sacrifice a little bit of that knee-dragging sensibility, this bike is a serious, seriously fun bike. And I said serious, seriously fun bike because it is a very serious motorcycle. You can't get on it thinking it's just fun. It's just for fun because it will put you in your place. It's a mature bike with a mean streak. It's like that that friend that your dad has where you're like, if I mouth off, this guy will not hesitate belting me one as if I was his own kid. This, this is a, this is a, a, a grown up, potentially violent motorcycle. Which I could see could be a turnoff. But that guy, you know, that, that friend of your dad's who would haul off and belt you if you if you mouthed off is also the guy you thought was really cool. And you kinda wanted to listen to his stories and you know be in the same room with him for a little while. And I'd like to be in the same room with this bike for a while too. Oh, and when you, I swear to God, when the wind noise stops. Wow. Katonk, love, love the transmission and the clutch on this bike. Oh, I'm getting to know it now. And that, I mean, that's what Kyle said. He said, you know, I wouldn't let anyone just get on this bike and go. I wouldn't encourage someone to just get on this bike and go. And I think it comes down to respect. I think this bike commands a certain amount of respect. But when you get to know it and when you get to understand its capabilities and its limitations, you can really respect it. And if you respect it, it will show you a side that makes you just truly enjoy motorcycling. This is a bike that I now know why it's a legendary bike. I know why there's there's mythos behind it. I, I, I respect this bike. I do, I respect it. And I respect it for a lot of reasons. And it's not just the power. I mean, you can you can look at the power and be like, yeah, it's powerful. But even even in tame dick whistle style riding, there's something characteristic about it. It's got character, and that really is the barometer for me of what makes what makes a fine fine motorcycle. What makes a motorcycle worth riding, worth owning. And I'm sure, I'm sure Kyle, he'll get the nods and respect for people who know what it is. And he'll be completely ignored by 95% of the rest of the motorcycling public. Not much, not to mention, the general public, the motorcycling public, will ignore him. But those of us who know, I kind of knew, when I, I always kind of craned my neck when I saw a VMAX because it was curiosity. It wasn't knowledge. It was curious ignorance. But now, thanks to Kyle, I have, I have the knowledge 
and I, and I, and I don't know if I, I don't know if I, I'm now worse off for it. Am I worse off for having the knowledge because now, now I kind of want one. Now this has to be on the Dream Fleet list because I have that knowledge now. The, the, the curious ignorance was, ooh, what does that guy know that I don't know? Now it's, oh, I know what that guy knows. I know what that guy knows. I know those air scoops are fake. <laughs> Power, <laughs> Did you actually get into V-Boost? See a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it's got into V-Boost. It's V-Boot. addicting. It's, um... Oh, yeah. If you like that video and you want to see more like them, hit like, share, and subscribe.